Representative Champion. Thanks, Madam Speaker. Members, I ordinarily don't rise on this particular floor. And the reason why I'm rising today is because I believe there's something important as usual is happening. But something that I think requires our immediate attention in real time. I usually don't like to rise, especially to oppose such a great chair. She's done a wonderful job as pertains to just all of her work. But I think this amendment that is before you is something that I find unconscionable. What I find unconscionable about it is that what it seeks to do, it seeks to repeal the low income motor fuels tax credit. And what that would do, members, is that it would seek to take that away from low income people and any savings put it over into the angel investment tax credit. Although I think both are very important, the context in which this goes forward is unfortunate. One, if you agree to this amendment and this particular provision in this amendment, what we are in fact saying to low income people is that we can make your promise and now we're going to take it back. And we're willing to take it back if it's going to help the wealthy and not help you. Using the, uh, the, the uh, credit takes approximately 30 million a year from low income Minnesotans and uses revenue to fund credits that will go to high income earners. These are the same people, members, that we are looking at cutting their safety net programs when you think in terms of health and human services, over 300 plus million dollars. These are the same people who were cut just the other day when we look at f at least $43 million that would be used in order to make sure that folks could transition from high school to college. You see that there's a decrease in state grant funds. That means these very same people are going to be affected. There's a decrease even in the work study program. So as we think about how do we find meaningful ways to create a pathway out of poverty and how do we make sure that we are being as inclusive as humanly possible so all Minnesotans can improve their quality of life. This is a very important vote this morning because there's a lack of inclusion. There's a lack of making sure that folks who are the low hanging fruit will not get any support. And so if we want to do something for the wealthy, we, we'll just take it from those people who really don't matter much to us. That's unfortunately is the message this morning. Especially when I think in terms of our mission from my vantage point, and it may be the minority vantage point here this morning, is to empower traditionally disenfranchised communities. We say that we don't want them on the welfare programs, but we're doing everything possible to make their lives even worse. All you have to do is check it out. And right. even when we begin to just, you know, think about the things that I've talked about as far as what we're taking away from them, we're just going to kick them a little more. Maybe they're not down far enough this morning. And I think this is unconscionable. The perception is that we are continuing to balance the budget on the backs of low income folks, and it is wrong and it is unconscionable. When are we going to include them in a process that is supposed to include them because we are here, we are in the people's house and that doesn't just represent certain segments of our community, but it should be all of the people's house. And I want you to know this morning that I'm not one who's against job creation because I believe the best social program is to have a job. But we can look back and drill down, drill down and the majority of people who are sitting on the sidelines will always be and has always historically been people of color and women. And they continue to sit on the sidelines. Even as I look at bringing legislation before this body that would, would seek to include even for people to follow the letter of the law, this body resists that. And yet and still this morning, we could have a proposal on the table to renege on a promise that would help low-income folks. And those are not just folks in my district, they're in rural Minnesota, they're in other areas of our state. So when sometimes people just think that it's only people of color, it's not just people of color. 
But if it was, is it not our charge in order to make sure that all people are included and that we're doing everything that we can do in order to lift them out of the tides of poverty? And yet, we're asked the question, why is there, it, why is there a pipeline from the cradle to prisons? It's because there's a lack of opportunity and there's a lack of thinking and making decisions that intentionally includes all people. And so with that, Madam Speaker, because I feel such a conviction this morning, I'm, I'm going to ask for a roll call. Representative Champion requests a roll call.